have a species be extinct and have a, a second chance to revive it is unheard of. We're going to basically see what we can find in the way of ivory bill signs or even the birds themselves. These birding biologists are looking for a ghost. The ivory-billed woodpecker, a bird thought to have been extinct. Or is it? In early 2004, along the Cache River in Arkansas, this video was taken from the seat of a canoe. See it? It's flying away now. John Arvin is one of many bird experts who has analyzed the footage. When you can see the underwing, you see a large amount of white on the trailing edge separated by a black line of feathers down the center. These flight patterns appear to show that the bird is in fact an ivory bill woodpecker as opposed to a pileated woodpecker. This video, multiple sightings, and analyzed audio recordings were enough evidence by experts to declare that the ivory bill lives. It was an incredible frenzy. The whole ornithological community was just electrified by this. The bird had been thought extinct for 60 years. The Arkansas footage brought a lot of hope, and it made other states, like Texas, get very excited because the chances of that bird being anywhere in its range are high. We're starting here. So John Arvin is leading a team of biologists, including John Fredland and Corinne Campbell. Navigate back. Their goal to find the ivory-billed woodpecker here in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> the search area covers part of the bird's historic range. Thousands of acres of bottomland hardwood forest habitat found in the Big Thicket National Preserve of Southeast Texas. Red bellied again. We're looking for any kind of woodpecker sign, either scaling, actually chipping away at the bark, looking for grubs for food, or cavities that it would make a home for the night. Yeah, but something really jacked that snag up. It's torn apart. We found some scaling that looks like woodpecker work. It's promising. It looks pretty pitted, but it is scaled all up and down. Take some footage of it. <laughs> By the end of the day, the team sees plenty of woodpeckers, but no ivory bill. Intense logging of bottomland hardwood forests in the late 1800s wiped out most of the ivory bill's habitat. The decline started when a lot of these large forests with large trees were cut down. The only film ever taken of an ivory bill was captured in 1935 in northeast Louisiana. The footage gives us some movement, some life to this bird, and most importantly, some voice. Massive sound equipment captured the only calls of the bird ever recorded. For the 30s, it was cutting edge. For these guys to have that kind of equipment back then was remarkable. In the search area, there are a total of eight species of woodpeckers, including the northern flicker, the red-bellied, and the red-headed but the closest look-alike is the pileated. Extremely similar, this makes finding the ivory-billed woodpecker a bit of a challenge. Look at the back, and there's a white backpack on the ivory-billed, yet it's black on the pileated. And both birds are crow-sized, so when you see a crow-sized woodpecker with a white backpack, you should get excited. But most people are seeing the one with the black backpack, and that's the pileated. It's now the middle of the search season. There it is. I see it there. 
The team hopes some new technology will help spot an ivory bill. A cavity was found the last time we visited this area. We're putting a video camera up to see if we can see anything that looks like an ivory bill. Pull this lock out. This isn't just any camera. It has time-lapse capabilities and is motion sensitive. Any bird is most active at sunrise and sunset. Green light. And it's hopefully going to capture a bird coming in to roost for the night. What do you think? Looks pretty good to me. All right. At another location. This black gum right here will probably work for us. John is setting up an autonomous recording unit, which is programmed to record at sunrise and sunset. Round to go. I've been anticipating its arrival for quite some time. There. We have a longtime local resident who has reported activity, and we're going to deploy it and see if we can't pick up some sound. Let's ease his way through this mess. The team still has thousands of acres to search. They hope this new equipment will help improve their chances. We're covering the ground really well. We're getting into some areas that no one's ever been to probably before, yet we haven't seen evidence that would support Ivory Bill being here. There is one species of woodpecker that is not extinct, but it is endangered, the red cockaded woodpecker. Unlike the ivory bill, the red cockaded woodpecker had enough numbers at the time that it was put on the endangered species list and that we had something to work with, something to improve upon, something to increase. Biologists here have a huge nursery of sorts as they try to raise more. Coming up on the nest tree here, to check on the active tree cavities during the breeding season, the biologists use what's called a peeper cam. Okay. Might take a second. It's kind of a tough one to get in there. There we go. So I've got one male with a red crown patch, and then we have a female here that has no crown patch on her, which is good. It's 324, three chicks, 50 footer. Once new chicks hatch, the biologists climb up to those 40 to 50 foot high cavities. How's it going up there? You got them yet? To ban the birds, to give each new chick a name and a number. We try to do all the banding and the climbing within 15 to 30 minutes because we really don't want to interrupt the feeding schedule of these nestlings. There you go, Nancy. Thanks. OK. Let's see what we got here. OK, they look about nine days old. Got their eyes slightly open. You can see the feathers are starting to come out. It's going to be the um, dark blue of her mauve. We color band the birds in case we have a single male that uh, has his own territory, but he doesn't have a mate. And that way we can uh, track down the female and move her to that single male, and hopefully they will nest the following year. This is a good spot. For the search team, one way to try and capture a glimpse of the ivory bill is to sit and play some music, <laughs> bird music. Turn the volume, double knocks. We use playback to call ivory bills in. Um, the idea being the bird will hear its own species call and want to come and check it out. And while out alone with their cameras, they've seen their share of birds. I saw a affiliated during the playback, but he didn't seem to care at all about it. He just went away working on that snag over there. The snakes are out again. Can't say I like that. Lots of activity once it warms up in the swamp. An immense forest. Species, too below. A team of biologists and one bird. The odds are stacked. Some cavities on that tree. But there is always hope. 
Waypoint name, CCC. After almost six months, the team tracked tens of thousands of acres. As for the sound recordings from the ARU, nothing. And the pictures from the remote camera. There's me around the tree. <laughs> it looks like you're posing for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It did capture some critters. There's a deer. I see a shadow. Yeah. Is that what that is? That's the deer, yeah. Okay. But again, no ivory bill. No, you can't tell what it's doing. So after half a year in the big thicket, a ghost is still a ghost. There was nothing promising that we found out here to tell us that the bird is even in this state at all. But like any lost treasure, it might be hiding just out of sight. If there was a bird out there, I mean, there's still a huge chance it could be, and we didn't see it because it's, it's a pretty gigantic area we were covering, and it would have to rely on a whole lot of luck if it happened to be where we were. And all is not lost. This search brings new energy to the efforts to conserve and even restore these pristine bottomland hardwood forests of East Texas.